Uh, this is our first ever ecosystem legends part of the call. We couldn't have asked for a better person to be the first ever ecosystem legend to come on here. He is, of course, the CEO over at Helios Labs. He is a node merchant. He is the unofficial king of crypto Twitter. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for the intro. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. For anyone who just doesn't know, can you give them the real quick rundown on what Helios does? We are a developer platform. So if you want to build something on Solana, we give you the tools and weapons of mass development to help bring that to reality. I like that. Weapons of mass development. That's pretty good. See, this is why he's the king of crypto Twitter. He's got the he's got the good sound bites. So maybe the first question for you, Mert, when you look at the kind of the Solana DeFi landscape right now, both kind of Jupiter and beyond, what do you see? What gets you excited about uh, the ecosystem right now? The UI is pretty solid, right? Much more solid than anything I've seen in any other ecosystems. What I'm excited about really is the network getting fixed. That would be nice when I can actually land some transactions. And also, obviously, a lot of other teams are losing tokens soon. Right, Wormhole released one, Parcel's releasing another, and I'm just going to assume everybody with a points program is going to release something at some point. One, one thing that's actually really important that's coming at 1.18, right? Maybe I, I would love for you guys just to talk a bit about some of the shortcomings sure. in the network now and 1.18 sure. and how that is expected to improve the network. I guess maybe the TLDR on why the network sucks right now is because there's a lot of spam. A lot of people, since there's a lot of shitcoin activity, people keep spamming the chain to land these arbitrages. And Solana does not have a great bot deterrence mechanism. It added something called Quick for the networking layer. And there are some bugs with it that weren't discovered before because we never had this scale before. That's the main problem. And then there's other problems like the priority fees actually not being deterministic, which is to say that once you submit a transaction with that's above the median fee, so let's say the median is 0 0.001, once you're above that, increasing the fee will not help you. It, you're just totally random at that point. Okay. Uh, so just FYI. And so what 1.18 does is it makes the fee part more deterministic so that higher fees actually correlate to the higher likelihood of you being included in the block. But very importantly, that will not fix the current problems on the network because everything on the network is currently a downstream consequence of the networking stack being half broken. And for those, fixes are being rolled out pretty quickly, like Solana Labs and Gito, because Gito also loves the other clients. We're rolling out fixes pretty frequently for those. And um, at Helios, we're also doing a lot of A-B testing with different transaction sending methods, adding stake and whatnot. So we're definitely all very stressed <laughs> and trying to figure it out. We know the fix. It just takes some undetermined amount of time to roll it out properly without breaking everything else. So from what I've heard, 1.18, uh, kind of the, the validated upgrade for the network is going to be coming in kind of mid-April is the, the current kind of timeline. How much do you expect the, the scheduler fixes to improve the, the current situation? Uh, yeah, so it, it goes live April 15th, but it is optional to opt in. So not every validator has to upgrade mm. to it until 1.19. And it's very hard to say. I think maybe there's some improvements, but if I'm... Just to classify it, I would say a small improvement because the actual problem happens before the transaction actually gets to the scheduler in the first place at the networking layer. Mm. And I do spam pretty much every day on Slack. I'm like, dude, <laughs> fix the thing. He says to use state connections. That doesn't also really work that well. But I will keep spamming him until it's fixed. So no, no worries there. <laughs> on behalf of the manlets everywhere, spam Tolly's DMs. Bert. That's all. That's all we can really ask. Uh, yeah. Cool. I did want to get a little bit of your take on kind of like where you think Solana DeFi is heading next, not over just, you know, the next month or two, because obviously there's a bunch of these token launches, but what does kind of like success for Solana DeFi look like to you over the, you know, the two to five to 10 year kind of horizon? How do you think about the long, the end game here? One thing that's clear is that Solana's approach to scaling, which is a globally shared state machine that's composable and has very low latency is the ideal medium for trading. Okay, so Tolly's whole thing back in the day was NASDAQ on the blockchain or blockchain at NASDAQ speeds. And that I think is going to play out because the way that other ecosystems scale has a lot of bridging and trust assumptions and fragmentation. Mm -hmm. So what that means is I think the best use cases that leverage the best tech or the most optimal solution, such as Solana for DeFi, I think they'll end up getting the more liquidity over time. We can already see Solana doing the most volume, like it's flipped Ethereum in volume quite a few times while being broken. So you can imagine what happens when it's not broken. <laughs> and actually teams have tokens and Fire Dancer is live, right? So like all these mm -hmm. things are still coming. I think what that means is better liquidity. Some more use cases that leverage like composability, right? Like maybe structured vaults and, and stuff like that, I think would be pretty interesting. I, I just think that's a very macro level answer, but that's, I do think... 
like some of the bigger apps will start from EBM will start bridging over as well. Although I don't think they can really compete with Solana native teams from what, what I've seen so far. And then the other thing is like MEV, like once MEV comes back or once the mempool comes back from Jito, I think things get, could get interesting because then you have to make sure that you're setting uh, slippage correctly. And I think like execution on the chain will improve over time pretty drastically due to those evolutionary pressures. So I think the way it plays out is that it is actually the best chain for DeFi just because of the structure of the chain. Mert, thanks so much for coming out. Go check out Helios. Go use their RPCs. Go use their desk. Go read their blog. Some of the highest quality technical writing on Solana is over on the Helios blog as well. So big shout out over there. Mm. It's good stuff. Mert, thanks, thank you so much for coming out, man.